this presentation is going to examine the normal approximation of the binomial. Here's a question. If x is a binomial random variable with n is 80, that of course is 80 independent trials, and p is 0 0.4, which means the probability of success on a given trial is 0.4, we want to find the probability that x is at least 42, so 42 or more. How will we write that? Well, we know n is 80 and p is 0.4, we are looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 42. Uh, let's go ahead and try to solve this on Excel. So if we have n is 80, p is 0.4, our goal is to find the probability x is 42 or more. So we want 42 or more, so it goes all the way up to 80. 42, 43, 44, and we will autofill that to 80. We have 80 numbers. Now I want to get n shoes x. So n is 80. This is going to equal combin 80 comma the x value. Our p is 0.4. This will equal 0.4 to the x value. Our q is 0.6. So it's 0.6 to the n, which is 80, minus the x value. equals 0.6 to 80 minus the x value. And then p is the product of all those guys. Equals the product of n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. And we get that number. And then we can easily autofill all of those down through 80. And we want the probability that x is 42 or more. The probability we have 42 successes is 00699, etc. Probability 43 successes is 0041. If I want at least 42 successes, I need to add up all those probabilities. So we're going to say equals the sum of all of those numbers. And if we sum up all those numbers, what do we get? The result is 01582. So the likelihood of getting 42 or more successes, the probability is going to be about 0 0.0158. Now, we're going to look at the normal approximation, and we have to determine when it's fair. We need both NP and NQ to be large. In our case, NP, 80 times 0.4 is 32. NQ, 80 times 0.6 is 48. Those are both large. It'd be nice if they're both bigger than 10, but... In our case, if they're both bigger than 5, we will assume that it's reasonable for us to use a normal approximation to the binomial. So you'll recall that for a binomial random variable, the mean mu is n times p, and the variance is npq. In our case, we have n is 80, p is 0.4, and q is 0.6. So mu is np, 80 times 0.4, 32. Variance, 80 times 0.4 times 0.6, 19.2. And the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Standard deviation will be square root of 19.2 or 4.3818. Now, we have to think about our continuity correction, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you this slide where we have what appears to be something like a binomial, and then we have a normal distribution on top of it. If we are thinking about being larger than 8, uh, larger than 8 would start at 8.5. Larger than 9 would start at 9.5. Larger than 7 would start at 7.5 because 8 is perceived as the numbers from 7.5 to 8.5. So if we're asking the question, probability x is greater than 7 from a discrete perspective, on the continuous perspective, bigger than 7 would mean greater than or equal to 7.5. Similarly, greater than or equal to 8, if you're greater than or equal to 8, we're starting at the same location. That is also the probability x is greater than or equal to 7.5. Of course, in a discrete random variable, if you're bigger than 7, you are by definition greater than or equal to 8. So let's look at our example. We want the probability x is greater than or equal to 42. So 42 starts here. Greater than or equal to 42 means I have to include the entire block that 42 was on plus everything that comes after it. So the borderline would be here at 41.5. 
So on the discrete side, we'd be greater than or equal to 42. But on the continuous side, we would simply be greater than or equal to 41 and a half. So keeping that in mind, we want to find this probability, the probability x is greater than or equal to 41 and a half. We have the mean, variance, and standard deviation, and we're going to use that to convert x into a z-score. So we're going to subtract the mean, subtract 32, divide by the standard deviation, 4.3818 to get the standard deviation, to get the z-score. So x minus mu over sigma greater than 41.5 minus a mean of 32, divided by that standard deviation, gives me a z of 2.168. And how am I going to do that? Well, I guess I could again go to my applet. So the applet is lo located there at Stanford. So 2.168 is what we're interested in looking at. I want to go to the right of 2.168. So 2.168 is here, and we're going to go to the right. And the probability it gives me is 0 0.01508. So that's our probability using the normal approximation to the binomial, and that compares favorably to what we had with Excel, our precise answer, 015A2, and you can see the normal approximation to the binomial is indeed fairly close to the correct solution. One more example here. A manufacturer claims 3% of all items are defective. If 400 are selected, what is the probability that fewer than 10 are defective? So less than 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. N is 400, P is 0.03. I want the probability X is less than 10. Well, is it fair? To be fair, we've got to show NP and NQ are both large. So there's N, 400, P, 0.03, Q, 0.97. NP is 12. NQ is 388. They're both larger than 10. They're both larger than 5. They're large. It's fair to use the normal approximation, which means our answer should be fairly close to the correct answer. We want our continuity correction, we want fewer than 10. So you'll notice 10 really starts here at 9.5. If we want to be less than 10, we've got to be less than that value. So there is 9.5. And then we can say on the discrete side, we'd have the probability x is less than 10. But that means on the continuous side, that that's the probability x is less than 9.5. So if I want the probability x is less than 9.5, again, I need the mean, NP, 400 times 0 0.03, 12. The variance, NPQ, 11.64, and the standard deviation, the square root of the variance, 3.4117. We want to convert this x into a z, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. So x minus mu over sigma, 9.5 minus 12, divided by 3.4117. Probability z is less than negative 0.7328. And this time, I think I will find that on Minitab. So I'm going to write CDF negative 0.7328, and this is a z-score, so we're going to say normal, 0, 1, period. And what comes back? 0.23184. So there's our probability, about 0.2318. Now, let's check that using a mini-tab simulation. So we're going to say random 10,000 C1. Binomial 400.03, sort C1, C2. Random. 10,000 C1, semicolon, binomial. 400.03, period. Sort C1, C2. And what are we interested in finding? We're interested in finding the probability that x is less than 10. So we're going to look in C2 to find out how many of those numbers indeed are less than 10. Looking at our number, I have 2,347. So my probability that x is less than 10 is approximately 2,347 out of 10,000, which is 0.2347. And that is fairly close to my answer that we did using the normal approximation of 0 0.2318.